welcome everyone to episode 62 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been watching the videos and subscribing. It means a lot to us, and we do this for you. If you haven't hit that red button yet, you need to hit that, hit the bell, and stay up to date with what we're doing here. So this week, we're going to be covering a new player in the custom cabinet business. Um, this is his first one. I know he's just kind of getting into it. We'll see where it goes. Um, but he donated uh, a really cool custom downwell cabinet to Glitch Bar in Fort Lauderdale, which we have spoken to Joe, who's the GM there. Um, and this is Game Hog Customs. So they made a really cool cabinet. It does a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm going to introduce the owner, Joseph Dominguez, now. Um, how you doing, Joseph? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad that we got you on here. I saw that that downwell cabinet. Um, well, it's been a little while now. It was a couple couple weeks, maybe a month and a half ago. Yeah. And um, I was talking to another guy who builds cabinets, Dan from DSM. And he was like, did you see this cabinet? You need to see this cabinet. <laughs> um, so I looked into it and it, it's beautiful. Like it's a super nice looking cabinet and it's really cool that you donated it to them too. Mm -hmm. So let's just jump into to you. Just introduce yourself. Let people know a little bit about who you are and what you do. I'm Joseph Dominguez. I am the lead designer at Metro Group Miami in Hollywood, Florida. And um, I... I'm a video gamer on the side. I do, you know, mostly console gaming, of course, wherever I can get my hands on. But um, I've always loved arcades um, ever since being at arcade at like, you know, skating rinks for my birthdays and stuff, you know. <laughs> so always get attached to those. And uh, I've always wanted my own. I've always, um, I mean, just having them around. I mean, no, they're just big boxes most of the time, but they're beautiful to me. And uh, I've always wanted my own. And uh, so kind of, got involved in wanting to make a cabinet or at least wanting to refurbish a cabinet ever since, uh, well, I guess like two years ago, right before the pandemic, basically, I just, you know, started thinking about it. And then during the pandemic was the perfect time to get started. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give us a little more info about Metro Group Miami. I know you told me a little bit about it, but what is Metro Group Miami and what do you guys do? Metro Group Miami is a basically a graphics company. Um, we do anything you can think of, all the way from large graphics on the side of the arena, like large. Um, there was a LeBron James wall wrap back in the day we did. It was massive, you know, almost this half of a, the arena, and all the way down to car wraps, all the way down to custom graphics for anything. I mean, we really try to keep it open, you know. Our, our list of a uh, list of things we do here we really don't like to say no um so it's a it's a curse and a joy <laughs> always having something to work on and it, it sounds like a really cool thing because you have so many different clients that you're working with and so many different areas of art and you get to really express yourself in different mediums and sizes and it seems yes. like something that's that always changes it's always um, changing yeah <laughs> so i mean i guess that kind of leads exactly like perfectly into what I was thinking of next. And what is it that made you want to build an arcade cabinet? I mean, it, it seems like a lot of people it's, it's kind of an old art style, really, I guess not a lot of people are making them anymore. And you decided to go into it and like start from scratch. Like this was the first one you ever made, right? Yeah. I mean, I would love to use from scratch, which would be like cutting the wood myself, but this is the first one I've done. That was like a full cabinet. I've wrapped cabinets for people before. Um, just side art and stuff and, and, you know, the marquee. But this is the first one I wanted to do, like, every inch of it. You know, I wanted to do the team molding. I wanted to do, you know, the wire, figure everything out, basically, for the first time. And so it was a lot of trial and error and uh, YouTube links, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And, I mean, I've been wanting to do this for a while because I've always, like, thought it would be – I mean, I, everyone's got main cabinets and everyone's got multi-case and stuff, but, like, I really like just a good – you know, standalone cabinet, special graphics for it. You know, sometimes the graphics are a little crazy compared to the gameplay, but like, I just love that whole look and feel like presenting something really. Um, it's like a game in a box basically, but uh, presenting it to people and having them like stop and look and, oh, I wonder what this game is. I want to walk up to it and play it. So I've always kind of uh, wanted to do something like that. So this is my first real, my first real step into that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love dedicated cabinets. I think they're they're so cool. It adds such a cool ambiance and atmosphere to the game outside of actually playing the physical game. Yeah. Um, so walk us through the process. Like, how did, how did you get started? 
what what steps did you have to take like go from step one to like the game being done and you moving it out of the, the place step one step one basically was how can i get these controls to work so um, i received a raspberry pi uh for my birthday a while back and i started getting into the idea like oh I'll make a little you know everyone's making arcades with this so i bought some joysticks and buttons and really just trying to figure out how to get those to work with games on my pc that i mean at first it was easy you know just plug and play but then trying to get them to work with games that like don't take those kind of controls was kind of interesting to me and so one day i just kind of like made down well you know work with the joystick and buttons and like it was like just so much fun <laughs> and uh I couldn't believe that we hadn't done, you know, I hadn't done it before, or like, I mean, you know, I haven't seen that much before. I don't, I don't know why, but um, um, yeah, like, it all started with the controls and like just nothing else, and then that's when I thought, you know, this needs to be its own cabinet, and so I started looking, of course, for empty cabinets or how to build my own from scratch, and you know, what everything that comes with that, um, and I received, luckily some friends of mine got me a an empty lethal enforcers cabinet and so this thing was you know stripped of all its best parts and it was gutted and uh, i just had to like pull the old crt out of there and some other things but uh it was a great first start like it was just a blank canvas in my eyes so uh you know getting that whole thing stripped and painted and like it just started coming together and i immediately started like working on the graphics and just, I don't know, I just, it was like month, maybe two or three months of, of straight work. But, you know, I enjoyed every bit of it. And it's actually kind of sad that it's finished now. Because, like, I think tinkering with it and working with it was, like, the most fun. Um, so, yeah, got the cabinet, tore everything out, you know, took a list of what I needed and started, like, researching, you know what's the best computer to run single play you know just single games like this you know like how much power do i need to put in this do i need you know i i mean i learned everything basically from not knowing anything since last year so it's been uh it's been a wild ride for me but uh um where was i, I was talking about the process <laughs> uh so yeah so uh, um bondo work a lot of bondo work you know, this thing had a lot of damage, um, but that was that wasn't too bad. Uh, once I started getting, like I said, the paint on, and I started getting like uh, the marquee up and 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 the bezel, um, it really just started coming together. And uh, for a while, I was, I mean, I was unsure about the art, you know, because I see a lot of people who want to get like custom art made for the game that kind of looks like the game, but it's of course way more realistic or a little crazier looking. And that would have been a lot of fun, but I kind of uh, started like running out of patience and decided I was going to totally vectorize the box art for the game, like the original artwork that came with the game of the uh, Will Taro falling down the well. And so once that started coming together, and that's my, that's my part right there. That's my forte. Like I am a, I, I'm really good at, um, vectorizing graphics and, and and recreating things from scratch you know like if nobody has any art or somebody has like a really low res logo i'm really good at recreating those things so once that started coming together and i started getting this really nice art on the side I, it was just it everyone was like waiting for me to finish this thing <laughs> so um uh the art went on the screen that was all little bit of you know a mission throwing that screen in there getting at the right angle and making my own you know i don't know uh you know making my own bezel for it and stuff and the uh and then i think the last and hardest part was honestly the control panel because i didn't have anything to just drill a new hole into i had to create that part from scratch so um that was fun uh learning <laughs> learning all about mdf learning about uh, the the bits for making T molding slots, you know, getting all the parts <laughs> and uh, wiring everything up and um, a little help from a friend here and there. And man, the thing turned on and it was just incredible, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's gotta be so exciting. Like after you go through the whole process and I know I've, I've been 
fairly hands off with a lot of the Galactic Battleground stuff, but like seeing that cabinet turn on for the first time is so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was going to ask what the hardest part of the whole thing was, but you said it's the control panel. The control clearly. panel. <laughs> um, yeah. If you could give someone that's interested in making their own cabinet tips, like things to, to be ready for or pitfalls to avoid, what would they be so that they, they go a little bit smoother in their process of making their cabinet? Pitfalls to avoid. Well, I mean, I didn't, luckily I didn't run into too many issues, but try to keep away from cabinets that have too much water damage. <laughs> it just really drags everything out. You know, there were parts of this where people put their hands up to play the game and like um, you could tell those areas were just swelling and uh, particle board doesn't do too well after that. Uh, so it was a lot more work in those areas, trying to get that smooth, trying to get that clean. I mean, of course, you're going to find an empty cabinet that's not always going to be in perfect condition, but you just got to like, pick and choose your battles, you know, like, I mean, luckily, we have really good, um, we have really great, like, vinyl here, <laughs> the best way I could say it, like, high-quality vinyl and laminates. So I saw a lot of people online were having issues with wrapping their cabinets and not getting, like, bumps and, you know, weird marks from the wood or if they didn't paint it correctly. So luckily, I was able to avoid most of those issues with, like, a really nice vinyl. <laughs> and, uh, um, but yeah, I would just say, like, I would just say be careful with, with cabinets you choose, you know, and just because it's free on the side of the road. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much work you want to put into it, but, you know, uh, I mean, it's all personal preference. Um, and as far as, as far as, I mean, it really is just that, I mean, it was the control panel was hard at first, but I mean, everything else flowed so nicely. You know, it, it wasn't really that hard figuring out the rest of it, but, you know, getting the tools and getting the right equipment to make certain things. I think that's the hardest part. So if you have a friend who's into woodworking or, you know, maybe there's like a community online or, or I don't know, people are giving advice for alternate ways to do these kind of things. I think that would be helpful because I did a lot of just kind of like like I said, video research and then just get the tools on my own and just, um, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, you know, trial and error. Uh, so it was a lot of trial and error. And I'm sure I could have asked for more help. I think asking for help is my big thing. You should always ask some other expert for help and don't just try to like figure it all out on your own. It's okay to ask. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm hearing do your research, make sure you have the right tools and don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think those are, are great tips really in any kind of area of creativity. It's it, especially with something that you've never done, like building a cabinet. And I think the water damage thing is a really good point too, because that's something yeah. that's a huge headache to deal with. Like yeah, scratches, yeah. anything, any kind of scuff that's easy. Water damage is just a whole problem itself. Um, I guess, since you said you had other games that you were trying to wire up controls to, what other games were you looking at? And on top of that, what are your top five favorite indie games ever? Oh, boy. Top five favorite indie game. Oh, I guess I'll do the first part. Um, other games I was messing with, um, I think other people have already done Nidhogg, but I was definitely wanted to play Nidhogg with a joystick. Um, I haven't gotten to do two-player yet, but that was kind of fun. A little difficult, but kind of fun. Um, I'm actually trying right now to figure out a way to, I mean, I've seen, this isn't new no one's, you know, this isn't going to be the first time, but I'm, I'm working on, a, uh, my own, um, Geometry Wars cabinet. Cause I'm a big fan of Geometry Wars. That game just, is so much fun. So much <laughs> yeah. Fun. Right. And so I've seen online, some people have already done it in 2015. Somebody did a really nice one and, but it's kind of like a, I still have to do it. I'm not going to like, well, if they did it, I'm not going to do it. Like I still want to knock out a jump chores cabinet you can so. put your own spin on it sure yeah exactly made it a little bit different from everyone else's so that's that's kind of like a fun little challenge right now is the best joysticks for that you know what's the best smoothest uh you know uh you know eight-way controller i could find for that um uh, i mean also because i have some friends who really love uh certain games on their phone and asked if is it possible to like get these to work with you know the same kind of controls and and it is and i've you know just last night i got some there's some ios game 
that I was able to get working with the, you know, you know, arcade buttons. And so that's pretty cool. If I can get that to just load up, play the game and then you're in, I mean, I mean, there's not a lot of Android, you know, arcade cabinets out there, I guess, but I mean, that's something I really want to see get finished <laughs> pretty soon. So, um, best of oh, so my favorite indie arcade uh, games. I mean, I really like just those really weird ones. And like I said at the beginning, I was I'm more of a console guy, and the you know, so I, I I'm gonna pull up some console game, you know, indie games here. But I don't know if you've ever played Mount Your Friends. I've uh, I played, that, played that one now. Okay, it's a pretty wa uh, wacky little uh, multiplayer game. It's a lot of fun with friends when you're drinking and stuff. Really silly graphics, pretty uh, simple gameplay, but a lot of fun. I think that would be a hilarious game at an arcade. <laughs> um, I mean is downwell even an indie game anymore it's so big now i mean i love downwell I mean, it started indie it started indie it's true it's true um i love black emperor i could play that a lot i wish i had like a dedicated thing you know cabinet in my room for that just waste time all day on that <laughs> um let's see what other indie games have i i don't know right now my brain is racing through like i was finishing ghost of tsushima the other day so I'm like thinking about that right now. <laughs> so I'm having a hard time thinking about anything else. But uh, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> yeah, more, I mean those are more, those more. are good those are good indies. Like Black Emperor is a ton of fun, um, yeah. and I I did get to speak to Tomas about that and kind of hear his story behind making the game, which was really fun. Um, I guess one of the last questions I have for you is, what are the future plans for Game Hog Customs? Like, what are other cabinets that you are looking to make, and are you maybe looking at like licensing a game and then actually producing your own cabinets or yeah you know I, I i saw your interview with the dsm guy and uh it's such an interesting thing like i don't <laughs> right now with my main job being like most of my life i i can't imagine jumping into something like so i know I, I wish someone else was around that me to help me with that whole thing like you know like a <laughs> i don't know like a like an agent, like, Joey, make this, you know, shut up and make this. That'd be great. Um, I would love to work with a developer one day. I think that'd be really cool because, I mean, even with the Dumbo Cabin, I had some ideas. Like, I wish I could edit the menu system and get in there and change certain things. And so I would probably have to contact Moppin for that. Um, that would be a, a lot of fun, though, working with a developer, the way I've seen other people doing it, because I'm just good at, taking their ideas and making it into, you know, you know, making the graphics come out of nowhere. And, uh, and so that part's not hard at all. Um, I mean, future games, you already heard me say Geometry Wars, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I mean, right now, just because the cabinet, like, came and went, and now I'm just kind of like riding that, that high. Right now, I'm just messing around with certain things. I don't have anything like coming down the, the pipeline yet. I am looking again for another empty cabinet. As I told my friends, like, you know, please, you know, we need to just get back into this, start making some more. So um, uh, I don't know if you've ever played a game called Reigns on the phone, R-E-I-G-N-S. I have not played that one, no. That's a really interesting, <laughs> it's hard to explain, but you're basically a king and you just make decisions, the left and right choices. You make a decision, yes or no, and it affects certain things. Something about that would be really cool in my mind as a bar top, like at a bar. Like you go to bars and you see this like, you know, little solitaire, like card games, simple things. Something about that game I think would be a lot of fun just as a, a simple little bar, uh, bar top arcade. So I was looking into that last night too. I'm always, you know, trying to research like what games would translate well into a cabinet so i'm always just watching videos long play videos of pc games or other games just trying to see how the menus work and how you know how smooth of a transition would this be if you were to just walk up and press go you know like i don't really want people to walk up to an arcade and have 12 options in a menu including exit i kind of hate that so um i'm looking into a lot of you know watching a lot of like i said long plays and other things that just how games open up, how they start, do they go straight in to the gameplay? Always a, always a great thing for me. I don't want any story most of the time. I just wanted to like jump in, you know, and get you hooked. So 
um, I'm just looking around, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm messing around with all kinds of things and I'm not sure which one of those things is going to stick and uh, become the full cabinet. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I guess I do have one more question that I kind of thought of well while you were talking and that is glitch bar. Why glitch bar? Like what, what, what about glitch bar made you immediately just go, I need to put this here. And what do you like the most about glitch bar? Glitch bar is just awesome. I mean, into a few art barcades in South Florida, but like something about that place was just really cool. It's a great vibe. And they have, of course, a lot of indie arcades in there uh, that you don't really get everywhere else. And so it was just, I mean, you know, you just want to walk around and play each one of them, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, a friend of mine said your cabinet would probably work great there because of that indie feel that, you know, it's not, a, you know, so he got me in and it was like, I think it's perfect. It's in a great place too. It's right up front when you walk in. <laughs> uh, I was really fortunate. Um, it just, it just felt like a right fit, you know? I can't imagine, I mean, there are some other arcades in Miami and there's a pinball museum in West Palm, but this was just like the one bar that I think it would like have looked and played great in. And, uh, and it does, <laughs> it looks great. I love it. Um, yeah, it's just a great bar. Really, 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 really cool stuff in there. I mean, I wish I could go more often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could go more often too. It's a quite a bit of a drive for me though, coming all the way from Minnesota. So oh, crap. Um, I've been down there. I, I went down for a tournament for Queens Gone Wild and it was it was awesome. The, the space is so cool. Um, Dwight and Chris are fantastic. Joe is too. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess to wrap Music's everything up. Too. Yeah, the music is always good. The DJs <laughs> yeah. got some good stuff planned. Um, I guess to wrap it up, just let everybody know about social media so that we know where to find you to check your art out and maybe to follow future projects if you do any. Well, I'm pretty much only on Instagram on Game Hog Customs. Um, so you could follow me there. I'll definitely try to start posting more. You know, I'm trying to, <laughs> right now, I just kind of did a backlog of two or three other pro pro uh, projects and then the downwell, but follow me there because I'm definitely going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep coming up with like other wacky things or, you know, try my hand at things that have already been done, try to do them a little cooler, a little bit better, you know, more about the graphics on my end than it is the, the program, you know, the, the actual building. But, you know, I think that I could bring something pretty cool to this scene and uh, hopefully more people will want custom graphics for their arcades and hopefully we can do some amazing things for them. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to throw that link down in the description so you guys can go check them out. Um, I want to say thank you, Joseph, for coming on here. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always cool to talk to somebody else that's into the indie scene and wants to see more indie arcade games in arcades. Um, for anybody that's still watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate everybody that checks us out and shares with their friends so we can make the wave bigger and just keep bringing people on here. So until next time, peace. <laughs>